Put Dork back again? Hey, today we've got an exciting episode for DorkCast18. I'm going to be talking to a friend from Ghetto Clock. Well, that, that's a crazy name. We're going to have to figure out what that's all about. Hi, I'm going to be talking to Alex Polarotov. Um, And Alex, how bad did I pronounce your name there? Oh, I think you are very good at, at this. <laughs> okay. So and many old in a row. Part, yeah, what, what does it entail for you to be a partner ambassador? Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, Click Partner Ambassador is a huge honor for me because uh, of, uh, you know, it's uh, access to the com community uh, of uh, patient guys, folks, uh, who <laughs> patients uh, Click, and uh, it's a huge honor to be, uh, to represent Click in our region in Central Asia. Very good. Well, we're, we're certainly fortunate to have you, man. You bring a lot to the table. Uh, in shining a light on click. So, so I do appreciate that. And I chose to use that fact for Alex there uh, simply instead of a, a, a job title, um, because regardless of the title, what Alex does to shine a light is, is important. Uh, I, I know you've got multiple screens. Feel free to take a screenshot of this so that you can reach out to Alex now. He's giving you a million different ways to reach out to him. Uh, and stay connected. So feel free to take a look to uh, take advantage of that. And I do I do want to ask you about that name Ghetto Clock, Alex. That that's kind of an interesting name. How did you how did you dream up that name? No, oh, you know I, I'm a huge fan uh, of the movie of the movie Back to the Future because uh, of it's about time machine and ah. other things. <laughs> Uh, and we uh, incorporate uh, time machine in our uh, get a clock tool. Uh, I will show you uh, nice. later, of course. And uh, we just thought about okay, uh, how we can play with the future, with time, uh, with back to future movie. Okay, let's combine git and o'clock. I mean time, <laughs> etc. Nice. In one title, and that's how. Uh, that's that's pretty it's creative. Time. I wish we I wish we could use your time machine to go back in the past and put hair back on the click door's head, but I'll I'll survive. We'll survive for now. <laughs> I, again, if you, if you're interested in taking a screenshot of this, this is the website that you would go to. And dude, I gotta love you. I I I saw the splash screen. I'm not usually one for architecture decks. I'm more like, hey, what does this help me do? Uh, but I really kind of enjoyed this architecture. And it looks like you kind of fit in between click and other things. Um, and this was for your version control that we will talk about later. Uh, but explain this architecture a little bit. I think this is new because usually people are familiar with, you know, I plug in an extension. It doesn't look like you're a click extension. Uh, yeah, you know, we're extension. Uh, we are still extension, but not click extension. <laughs> we're Chrome Chrome extension. So, uh, and behind uh, the scene, uh, it was a pretty funny idea that, okay, so uh, we have uh, development to workspace in our browser and how we can use uh, these as advantage, uh, how we can bring the version control to every click developer just from the browser. And so we see uh, and we just discover that, okay, we can uh, create a Chrome extension that will connect with the Click API uh, from one side and from other side, we can integrate with uh, any Git providers that have API. And it's a pretty simple idea to do not disrupt uh, every user and uh, don't um, make uh, something uh, you know uh, complicated just make simple thing that yep. you can pull by a few clicks and you uh, just can connect to the git provider well we're gonna have you show that you better be able to back that up my audience expects <laughs> to see real stuff but i yeah. did think that was cool i wanted to make sure that that everyone was aware of that it is a it is kind of a simple design we use an api click is an open platform yeah. Uh, and you took advantage of that. I love it. Um, one of the things that I saw as, as I looked down, because I had heard of Ghetto Clock as a version control, so I wanted to talk to you about that. But the more I started digging in, I started seeing you do videos, and I installed this little this little click helper here that in, mm -hmm. that without it being on, I turned the extension on, your, your Chrome extension, 
And all of a sudden, this little like uh, paper clip showed up. And uh, we definitely want to show. So I hope you're ready to do a demo of that because I think people will be blown away when they click that little icon. I was, <laughs> it's just absolutely astounding to me. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because I'm going to bring up something uh, that I think, I, I don't know if it's scary or not, but in case you haven't been aware, the whole <laughs> world is talking about generative AI. You can't get away from generative AI, generative AI. Yeah. Is there anything, I mean, this is crazy to think. You're already kind of on the leading edge with what you're doing. There's no way that you've got anything ready that actually uses generative AI to help click developers like right now, is there? Yeah, sure. Uh, generative AI uh, is a um, pretty, you know, hype, hype topic to discuss. Uh, and of course, uh, we are thinking a lot how to um, harness in AI and GPT for uh, enhance uh, business intelligence uh, development workflow, and especially for click development workflow. Uh, you know, I also a uh, few months ago, I dropped uh, an article about the related to this topic. Uh, and from this article, uh, so we spent a few months and we delivered uh, some cool features uh, inside Gita Clock that I uh, can show for you if you want. <laughs> oh, well, if you're going to twist my arm, Alex, <laughs> I, you, you drive a hard bargain, but I would love to see what you're doing already and, and you're connecting with ChatGPT. Yeah, sure. Um, at first, let me start from uh, my uh, blog from Medium. Uh, I have a blog uh, in Medium, and uh, there is an article about um, our vision where generative AI uh, can uh, help uh, every click developer and every click business analyst. And it's more about and around daily routine tasks like, you know, code documentation, creating master items, reading chart sheet titles, and descriptions. And that's where we uh, are focused on and uh, this is the place where we think that generative AI uh, can bring to every click developer huge benefits because we, um, uh, for now, Gita Clock is not just, you know, version control tool. It, it's more about time saving tool. Uh, it saves your time <laughs> a lot. Uh, and It does. And, and if you keep that screen up there, what I loved when I saw this um, a while ago was that you list out the things that most developers think I hate doing that? Yeah. <laughs> um, now I, I I'm I'm honest. I do a lot of documentation. I yeah. put a lot of comments in. I love using emojis for comments. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always more than happy to share with customers my demo apps because I know it is all completely commented and will help them. Um, but those are not the things that I necessarily love doing. I yeah. love solving problems and creating code, but so much of what we do as developers does require a lot of these tedious, mundane things that would sure be nice to have some help on. And as we're thinking of generative AI is going to solve all the world problems, let's talk about use cases. Show yeah. me the use case. <laughs> and and so, so what uh, I've loved is you've identified here are the use cases, and I believe the ones you've got in yellow are the ones that you already help solve, like right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's uh, some kind of top top eight or top nine thing that I hate to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, uh, and let me uh, show uh, what things we can delegate to our uh, our AI assistant uh, for now. So, uh, as we said before, uh, Get a Clock is a Chrome browser extension. And okay. here you see the icon on the top right, uh, right. toolbox here. Uh, it yeah. is Get a Clock version control tool. Uh, that how does it looks like? Uh, it's just open the model window in your uh, browser page inside the click application. Uh, and you do not need to switch from one window to another window. You work in your click application, just press on Git clock icon here. Okay, uh, so you've got a little modal window that pops up there. 
Yep. Uh, and so uh, if you want to delegate some routing tasks uh, to the generative AI assistant, uh, which you... I do. Yep. <laughs> uh, and you, you have to turn on click helper here. It's okay. a small uh, to checkbox here. Uh, we see here that we uh, turned off our turned on our click helper. Right. And let's let's go uh, to the one of the daily routine uh, of oh, generating yeah. here. Yeah. And here you can see SKI button. And this is the button that we are looking for uh, okay. to delegate uh, the title generation for the selected uh, dashboard. Okay. So, and we can can just press this button. And here you can see uh, that it just renamed title and providing the option that let's call this dashboard sales performance analysis. Okay, as opposed to dashboard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and if I want to regenerate it, I can press it again. And I will see another option that was generated by OpenAI API and oh, push nice. to, the, to the click here. Uh, and the OpenAI told us that let's uh, call this dashboard like business performance overview. And we you, can, can you can ask again. Yeah, you can ask as many times uh, as you want here. Okay. Nice. Uh, and I think sales performance overview is pretty uh, pretty nice title uh, for this selected dashboard. That's a good one. But what I like um, is the is the demonstration there. A lot of people think we're going to turn in AI, we're going to use generative AI, and we're going to get the right answer the first time. Yeah. You don't always get yeah. th these giant large language models. They go down a whole bunch of paths and they have a whole bunch of answers they could handle. And then they decide which one of these are we going to present back to Alex or Dalton. And you <laughs> can keep asking, oh, give me a different one. Give me a different one. And as a developer, it the, the first two, you might think, this is horrible. You're a bad system. And then, bam, it's going to pop out like the other one, the business performance analysis. Like, that may be the title that impacts the end users versus the developer. And, yeah. and the developer will probably recognize that right away. And it looks like you're going you're gonna to ask AI here to generate a description that somebody could read then about what is in, involved in that sheet. Yeah, sure. We also have a uh, description generator here uh, that works the same as I uh, showed uh, uh, in title section. Uh, you know, um, I agree with you that um, that uh, when we're talking about generative AI, uh, it's always about uh, generative AI uh, can provide uh, to us options, mm -hmm. but we, we have to make decision which option do we want to use and right. what we want to do with options that was provided by uh, generative AI. Right. So I, okay. so I didn't mind the refreshing over and over at all. I think that's a great thing. Yeah. And that's why, so let's uh, press the SKI button here and you can see uh, it's uh, a huge uh, description explanation about this dashboard that was uh, pushed back from the OpenAI to, uh, to the uh, click to the Git clock and after that to the to the click. Uh, and here- Wow, it was really smart in the fact that it, it, it yeah. guessed at what was on the screen too. That's amazing. Yeah, and um, you know, here again, you can just regenerate uh, what do you see here again and okay. again uh, to see the uh, uh, preferable option that you want to uh, edit because of, uh, you know, uh, it's not the um, the finest thing, okay. uh, the finest yep. description. <laughs> and that's why we always uh, need, have to uh, check what was pushed back uh, from the open AI. Uh, and make right. a final decision what we want now, to Now, I, I was teasing before. It didn't just guess at what was on the screen. Clearly, you're asking for a description, but passing some information about what is there, correct? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, and then letting it take what you've passed it and wrap it. You're not passing it the data that's in the system. You're, you're not passing it the data that was on the chart you're just passing it some descriptions or metadata about 
the items on the screen. Is that right? Sure, sure. Um, there is no any, you know, uh, we don't transfer in uh, data. I mean, uh, from the data data model, uh, we just uh, uh, push uh, to the open AI uh, metadata about cool. uh, what is located uh, on the dashboard, uh, which uh, KPIs, uh, title right. of KPIs, and that's all. And you know, Good. the the thing that uh, you can see what we push to the open AI because on option page, uh, you can go to the setting page uh, uh, or third party integration uh, section on the left side. And you will see here uh, which prompt do we use for open AI. And you can also modify this. Ah, so you could change it there. This is awesome, man. So you yeah. could go in there and you could say, hey, I want a rap song is my description, or I want a formal title, or I want a very succinct uh, title. You can actually change what you're passing. Yeah, sure. That, man. That's crazy cool. And also you can change the language, uh, Spanish, German, uh, Dutch, or any other language uh, that you want to uh, feed to the uh, OpenAI uh, API. And in which language do you want to uh, get uh, the response? Wow. Man, this is, this is really incredible that you allow for the control over that. And obviously at the top of the screen there, if you've watched my recent video series for anybody... Uh, if not, go check out the uh, Click Dork YouTube channel and you'll find where I show you how to set up that open API key. Uh, because while we talk about chat GPT so often, the API is really through open AI and you do need to set up an account with them in order to get an API key. And yeah. for what you're getting back here, you're probably looking at fractions of pennies uh, that are charged for this. So there, so, uh, there is a charge through open AI, uh, but very, very minimal for these types of uses. Um, so I I've had my account for like four months now. I think mm -hmm. I'm up to $14 in, in mm -hmm. all that I do for all of my demos, uh, <laughs> in, in playing games. So, all right, let's go back to that app and take a look at some more at what, what's going on there. Yep. So, uh, okay, we can apply our change here, uh, yep. our generated title and description. Wow. And, uh, we can go inside the open, uh, the, to the master item. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go maybe, okay, let's go to this uh, cost. Uh, uh, okay, let's copy the expression here. Uh, I just want okay. to create from scratch new master item okay. to show you yep. uh, that we can do uh, for generating uh, name and description for, okay. for expression. And here I can't wait to see what it comes back with a name for that. Yeah. So total cost by quantity. Wow. Or we can another one. Okay. Another one. Another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, for everybody. When you're calling these things, there's no such thing as a right answer. There's a plethora of answers, and yeah. it gives you one at a time. Uh, so don't don't hesitate to refresh, and don't be afraid if some of the answers come back seem crazy. Yeah, because of it's uh, that's why we uh, use OpenAI to. Uh... Um, to get some inspira yep. inspiration <laughs> about the options so that uh, it could yep. provide. I love us. it. And then you can get a description for that. Once you've settled on that title, you can get a description. Yep. Wow. And it, that's awesome. Let's try again. Very nice. So that's how the to work uh, uh, in master item. Fantastic. And, yeah, and uh, it's, um, you know, it's um, some kind of uh, uh, life hack here. Uh, I mean that uh, if you have a description here and you have a dis uh, expression there, uh, so uh, we use uh, expression and description uh, yeah. and put it in our uh, prompt uh, to the open AI and generate better title. I yeah. mean... OpenAI generate better title. Right. Yes. No. No doubt. 
Okay, and let's create. So yeah, and this is the third uh, place where we can use our generative AI assistant. And you know, another place where we incorporate our generative AI uh, assistant uh, is the, some kind of documentation wizard. Uh, it's a it's the wizard that uh, uh, can help you to generate a dashboard catalog uh, in your Confluence or another knowledge database corporate knowledge database in Markdown right. using Markdown. Uh, wow. I mean, yeah, formatting uh, right. type of document. Okay. Uh, so I can show uh, a little how does it looks like. Uh, I, I'm not sure that uh, it is working well because of its, uh, uh, you know, some kind of de development version of the Gita clock that I okay. for you. So you're, so, so you're showing us and not this the other features are available right now, this yeah. second, today. They can yeah. go out there and try those things. This documentation wizard is something that you're showing. First time ever for the world on this doorcast of what's coming soon. Yeah, exclusive, okay. exclusively for doorcast. So <laughs> I appreciate you, Alex. Uh we can go, uh, we can select here uh, which uh, sheet uh, to want to use for our documentation. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay let's, let's pick uh, ABC customers. Uh, and on every sheet, there are a few charts here and we can uh, select them uh, on the right side of uh, our Okay. Uh, here we also can see the prompt edit the prompt that we uh, want to push to the open AI. And from, so, and, and I see here that it, it is very huge prompt and I think- uh, And so, it, so let, let's see that again. Yep. Again, you're not passing data, you're passing the metadata. The metadata. Okay. Yeah, it's it's more about uh, chart title, chart type, uh, dimension and measures, uh, I mean, formulas. And of course, you can check before push uh, these uh, meta information to the open AI, you can check uh, here in our prompt window. Right, okay. And only after that, you can press SKI button. Okay, <laughs> I see that the, this model, uh, this prompt is uh, very huge and uh, OpenAI couldn't resolve it. And <laughs> that's yep. so on what we are working on to optimize and compress our prompts and divide it into the chunks. Uh, so Right, and so you may have to send multiple chunks yeah. to fit within that token limit. Yeah. So, but <laughs> what we want to achieve, we want to generate here a uh, description of your dashboard uh, and you can uh, just, uh, so let me show you, test, test, test. And you can save uh, this description yep. that will be generated by OpenAI and it will be uh, saved. Uh, oh, excuse me, let me sign in. Live devils are always super fun. Everything in the cloud times out on you for security, obviously. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, security. Oops. Uh, some unexpected pit stop here. <laughs> That's okay. I think we got the idea. I think we got the idea. It would. Um, so, so what you still have to do for this to to BGA is figure out how to break your code up and know how many tokens is there. Yeah, yeah. I I like the idea of allowing them to select the sheets um, because sometimes there's you know j just a sheet that's a help sheet or um, sometimes for my demonstration screens. Um. Yeah, press no there. Oh, that's yeah. for me to press. Um, uh, you've got sheets that you don't, that may be private or you don't want others to see or that are play sheets. A lot of times I'll put sheets out there that are, you know, show the data model so that end users who can't go to data model wizard could see it, um, have information about how many rows are in tables, latest reload yeah. date, all, all that kind of thing. Um, so 
Um, I understand that you also could do thumbnails, man. I, I want to see the thumbnails. Oh, yeah. So uh, let me show you. It's another, you know, it's uh, I think it's um, the most popular feature of the Gita clock because <laughs> uh, of its uh, again, it's about uh, the regular pain of every uh, click developer. I don't know. Maybe it's not for every click developer, but for me, it's uh, really pain to uh, set up the thumbnail of uh, sheets uh, here, so, uh, uh, especially when uh, you have, you know, a uh, dozen of them. Uh, uh, here and it's always uh, without any thumbnail and yep. for yeah. for making life better uh, we just uh, create a Gita clock helper feature here okay. you can see that, uh, there are three uh, buttons there time machine diffuse and set a thumbnail yep. and let's uh, go to the set of thumbnail and here, just from, from the app, uh, you can see the model window uh, that provides me as a user to generate a uh, meaningful thumbnail. Uh, okay. I mean thumbnail that will contain title and subtitle uh, on their thumbnail. And okay. We can just uh, type here the, the main title, performance, uh, sales performance uh, we can select icon here that is a verified dashboard with verified uh, data that we can trust okay and, i like it and also we can select color uh because of maybe we have some you know uh now, some methodology or standard in our development process that every verified dashboard uh, should contain icon, uh, such kind icon and green uh, background uh, on their thumbnail. And also right. we can type here a short description to make our thumbnail meaningful. Okay. Uh, we can, okay. Yep. Orders uh, by category and distribution. Or or maybe sales trend and sales trend by month. Uh, so what we can uh, do next? Uh, we can press uh, apply thumbnail, and here you can see our thumbnail here. It's just applied automatically. That man. That, that is really cool. I, I like two things about that, starting with the governance. Um, I, I love the concept of having an icon, some, some clue uh, that tells okay. people, you know, this has been verified, it's been tested, or it could be it's, you know, um, you know, uh, a, a, a test version, right? We're, we're trying okay. two different versions of it. Give us your feedback of the yellow version of the of the of the page or something like that, um, and the fact that you're saving me time from having to go to PowerPoint, build some slides, color everything, yeah. take a screenshot of it, bring it in there, you know, save the file out, go go load it as content, add it to the page. Um, you you have saved an awful lot of time there. Uh, for those who tr who try to put these in, I, I like using the background colors a lot um, so that different thought processes or main sections of the app have different colors on the background and the users will know right away this is related to sales, this is related to inventory, this is related to something else. So great job. That That is a huge time-saving feature. I love it. I, I love it. Um, and how about that little uh, uh, paper clip that I saw for loading the QVDs, the the one mm -hmm. that I shared yeah. in my opening there? Uh, I, I yeah, think let's... I think people will die when they see this. This is really cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. See that little chain there? I see chains. Uh... Yeah, these chains uh, tell us uh, that Gita Clock detect that uh, uh, this uh, QVD that called plans uh, spec uh, dot QVD, um, has a lineage, a lineage uh, to the uh, QVD creator app that we have access to, and if we will press. So, so when you say lineage, yep. are you telling me I could look at this app? I come in to maintain your app. 
And I'm like, but where did this file come from? Yeah. I didn't have to try to figure that out on my own by going back to the catalog, finding every QVD amongst the thousands I have. You'll do that for me. Sure, because we're a time-saving feature of, uh, tool, so that's why <laughs> uh, we try to it. make your life. I love uh, how you keep coming back to the time thing. <laughs> All right, very cool. Uh, so, and let's so try. You just click that. So once you've enabled this browser extension, that that link is going to show. Yep, it's again about uh, click helper uh, yep. feature uh, in Git Clock browser extension. Uh, you have to turn on this right. click he helper, and after that, you will see when you're uh, in the load script, that thing just automatically shows. That's not native click sense. You click that thing. Don't tell me you're going to open the app that creates that QVD. Yeah, let's try, and you will see it live. <laughs> So, and here we are in another uh, app that called ADVH. Yep. And this is the app uh, that generate uh, our QVD. Wow. And that app uses a QVD from something else that's layered. Yep. And I could keep walking back that trail. Yep. I know there's a whole lot of click developers out there that use a click layering process. <laughs> uh, for QVDs, and wow, this is a time saver for sure, man. This time machine is really awesome. And you know, again, uh, you can see another type of uh, chain here. It's a gray colored uh, chain. Uh, yep. And we see that uh, we couldn't retrieve data connection uh, because uh, there is a variable here folder name okay. the full folder name but we can uh, resolve uh, such kind of issue uh, by uh, going to the uh, debugging mode uh, in our load editor all right uh, let's see that okay so i just press uh, this uh, orange bug uh, here <laughs> i let's go to the yep. uh, so i set up and i set up the breakpoint on la on the line uh, 28 and let's go to the uh, to this uh, to this line of uh, the code. Okay, let's wait a little. So okay, and here we are on the variable initialization step, and let's uh, go to the next uh, line of the code. And here we can <laughs> see, <laughs> dude, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. So, because we know the um, folder name uh, value, uh, yep. we we can create the full path, uh, full path to the particular query, and we just can redirect you to the query that we uh, see here in the backend mode. That is that is fantastic, Alex. That that is a really creative solution. Uh, when I talked to Rob Wonderlick a few weeks ago. Uh, to show his QSDA Pro that we're going to get to because I saw that in the ghetto clock thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, he he does evaluations because there is an API that will evaluate values like that. But if you're just raw in the click script, it, it's not like you can evaluate that on your own um, because that is just raw click sense at that point. So very cool solution to that. I, I love it. Uh -huh. And you know, uh, if we're talking about QSD Pro, uh, so yep. uh, an integration with QSD Pro, uh, and if you have QSD Pro, you can uh, just connect it to the Git Clock uh, browser, ext uh, browser extension. extension. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we will uh, provide you an option to kick off examination just from the app that you are located in. So uh, Git wow. Clock. Kick, kick off QSD Pro and get the result of examination and show you the list of uh, the things that was found by QSD Pro examination. That is that is that is crazy cool integration. And I also see Soter there. Sure. 
Uh, and if you have a Satare, install Satare uh, in, uh, instance in your environment, uh, you can also uh, connect to the Satare. Uh, and Satare is a zero version control tool uh, that can catch all uh, modification of the click objects. Uh, and you can use Satare with Gita Clock, where Satare will catch uh, modification and change, and Gita Clock uh, will provide the ability to um, go back uh, in time uh, of the click object and compare different version that 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 is really cool and that's I, when i showed that starting slide with the the ghetto clock uh web location uh you were purchased by modio yep. and wh when did that purchase occur uh so yeah it was in 20 uh, 2021 Okay. Uh, so, uh, multi acquired uh, Gita Clock uh, product, uh, and we incorporate uh, Gita Clock uh, in their service offering and product offering. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a really synergy between the products and between our teams because uh, of yep. for now we are part of the Motio and uh, I'm still uh, a lead. Uh, I'm still leading the Gita Clock uh, product. Uh, and so uh, we, we're working hard uh, to uh, make, uh, you know, dev uh, DevOps processes better and the uh, life of every click developer easier uh, to go home early <laughs> and ah, spend... Ah. <laughs> Wait, wait, I love it. I love it. I go home early. Yeah. That's beautiful. That that's beautiful. And I and I do like the way that uh you've already got those things integrated yeah. um, uh, into the system so that while I'm here on the screen, I don't have to leave to go to anywhere else, right? That, so Terra's got a easy user interface that I had on a Dorkcast a few weeks ago. <laughs> QSDA Pro has an interface. Uh, but I love that you've brought those things together and weave that suite of products uh, that Modio has together for end users uh, to give them a single interface where they're already working. Right? That that that's beautiful. Thanks. And so hey. now for version control, how does the version control stuff? That first starting slide, that little architecture slide that mm -hmm. I had that I thought was so neat. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love to see how you've actually implemented that um, for the from the developer standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, before we touch uh, touch uh, the topic about version control, let me uh, show uh, the last uh, and small but fancy feature uh, that uh, turned the, off the light uh, <laughs> in <laughs> the load editor. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. That's so you how can go to light mode or dark mode at the touch of a button like that. Yep. I like it. There, there's there's times I like to use one and there's times I like to use the other for sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's go back to the version control thing. Uh, as I said, uh, so uh, Gita Clock is um, like, um, like a bridge between Click uh, API and Git provider API. Uh, and we know that there are many Git providers, but uh, we have the most popular uh, Git providers uh, with the API because uh, so uh, we we have to com communicate with Git provider uh, with the API because of we are a browser extension. Mm -hmm. and Click provide us a really great API because of uh, Click. Uh, 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 I think every module, every service in Click provides. Uh, mm, brilliant api uh, capability to make uh, any products that you have in in your mind uh so and from other side uh, we see that uh, many git providers also uh, provide apis and that's right. why you have to configure uh, your connection uh, to the git providers that you use in your organization or uh, in your personal needs and we support uh, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket Cloud, Bitbucket Server, uh, Azure DevOps, Gitia. It's open source and self-hosted Git service. Wow. Okay. Uh, and AVS Code Commit. It's uh, wow. Yeah, it's Git provider from the Amazon. Uh, and so you're you not can... locking anybody into one or the other. You simply yeah, yeah, provide sure. the conduit. I got an API on one side, and I got an API on the other side. You tell me who I'm talking to. I love it. 
Yeah, we, we're like an octopus with... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, like it. Yeah, you can connect to everything. Uh, so not everything, but plenty of things that you can integrate with. <laughs> okay. Um, in, in my example, I just uh, connect uh, Git O'Clock with the Git server, uh, okay. my personal Git server. Right. Uh, the all uh, all thing that I will show next, uh, we push our change to my personal uh, Git uh, account, okay. and I will show you. But very uh, good, and that's one of the things I've demonstrated before with Click Application Automation was backing things up to to a GitHub, and mm -hmm. you can make those things private so the people know you're not. It, it is a public cloud service, but you can make those things private. Um, and then permit access to just two or three other developers uh, within the company or keep it private amongst yourself. Yeah, because of um, in GitHub example, uh, you can see that there are two type of uh, uh, spaces uh, that uh, Git that GitHub provides. It's personal space uh, for personal use, or you can create organization uh, yep. there. And you can add in GitHub uh, members of the organization and, and all your repositories will be created privately for um, the people that you will include in the organization. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But uh, let's uh, take a look uh, and see that there is no any configuration part for Click Server. Uh, because you do not need to configure a connection to your Click Server. Because uh, of we it, uh, we do uh, we do it under the hood. We know your uh, your connection with Click Server here, and that's why you do not need to make uh, any kind of configuration with your uh, connection uh, with your. Uh, and when Click you say you know what it is under the hood, how do you know that? Because uh, of uh, Click API is the brilliant API. <laughs> <laughs> and because of uh, you, you have a session, open session here because I'm yep. inside the Click application, and Click API know that okay, it's my session, it's 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 your session, it's your browser, and anything that you send from from the browser here uh, is just a request it's from sent under the... your session with your user ID that's connected right then. Yep. So, and you can just use it uh, without any configuration yep. from Click site. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, let's take a look on the Time Machine site uh, where yep. we can compare different version of the dashboard. Uh, we can take a look uh, at this example. We have ABC customers uh, right. dashboard here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to press details here. Okay. And there are three buttons. So uh -huh. Yeah, so machine. you showed us the set thumbnail. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we can go to the time machine. Nice. I like your feedback on the screen so that we know things are happening. Holy smokes, man. You've got like a Gantt chart at the top showing yeah. me the history of <laughs> what was done. Yeah, uh, and you can see here a uh, timeline yep. and you can navigate uh, through this timeline and pick any previous version that you want to see the uh, version, the previous version of the uh, selected dashboard. Okay. And so let's, uh, as an yeah. example, let's go to the sales trend chart. And we see that uh, something uh, changed here on Yep. Uh, color of the uh, line chart was changed uh, and let's go maybe to the another version we can zoom in into the timeline to see the change uh, during uh -huh. the space wow. uh, in a month dude this is fantastic and if we want to go uh, deeper yeah uh, we can zoom in uh, the day and we see uh, the time. that, yeah times Wow. And let's go to the first version. Or maybe for this. Okay. Yeah, for okay. The... 
Okay, so uh, we can apply uh, our changes here. I mean, so there uh, we'd say, "Hey, Dalton's boss Hugo messed up our sheet." <laughs> I see the previous version. I'm like, "Yes, I had to have this color of red shading, and I can apply it and throw his his changes away." Yeah, I love it. And we can roll back here, or we can cancel. Okay. Uh, Stay with uh, with the Stay with the current version. See, Hugo likes this because now there's two bars and I, you can see them both. I see yeah. why he made his changes. Good job, Hugo. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it was Time Machine, but we have another button here that called Diffuser. And we can take a look and see uh, what we provide uh, by, okay. by this. Uh, okay, let's go to the customer uh, customer analysis and performance dashboard here. Yeah. Uh, let's dive into the diffuser. It's uh, you know it's uh, the same uh, uh, view that we saw in Time Machine, uh, but with a few changes here. Oh uh, wow! Yeah. Uh, here we can see on the uh, two uh, two panels. So the left panel is our current application state, right. and the right panel is uh, the version uh, that we can select in our timeline here. Okay. Uh, we can select uh, this version, and on the right uh, side you will see uh, the selected version. Okay, we see here that uh, there is no any change. So let's take a look to another version and find something interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's a change. Here. Yep. And we highlighting them uh, by yellow and green color. Uh, what is the definition of the color here? Uh, the green color said us that this is... Uh, totally new object in selected version because uh, we uh, haven't okay. got any object like that on the left side. And yellow button told us that uh, it is the same object that we see here on the left side, it's customer types, okay. but with changes. And what change was made here? We can see, uh, you know, uh, the wow. property of the object and what was changed. And you can merge here the changes to maybe roll back your um, your chart type to the pie chart from the bar chart. Yep. Now, hang on here for a second, because yep. I think this would be a good point. For all of you developers who do understand that ClickSense is an open API and that we provide all kinds of APIs to get to everything, this is the perfect example of it. You're actually showing the API properties yep. right there um, yeah, sure. and what would be called. So at the property level, you're tracking everything through this API, which is phenomenal. And you can roll back to any uh, version of the selected property if you want. You don't need to merge everything. You can merge yep. on the property that you want to. Uh, so you down. could you could go back to a previous title while yep. keeping the fact that it changed from a bar chart to a pie chart. Yeah. In incredible. And you're doing all this just through a browser extension. Just through the browser extension and just from the app that you are uh, open now and uh, you use uh, in your work environment. Dude, this this is lights out stuff, Alex. This this is lights out stuff. And if we go uh, into the technical details, I mean, if you have uh, many developers or two or three developers that works with app uh, in a time, uh, we yep. have branching. Uh, but in my example, there is only one branch that's called main. But you, if you have uh, two or three branches uh, of your application, it means that uh, you have two or three developers uh, that work in maybe on the same uh, dashboard uh, and okay. made change. And you want to compare uh, work of uh, of, Deve of Del Dalton, of Hugo, or yep. anyone, uh, you can select here yeah. the version. And you can well, come. Well, we're always going to keep Hugo's now because his chart was much better than mine. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it, we'll, we'll keep his all the time now. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, That's cool. Okay. Yeah, let me just uh, go back uh, and see uh, that we rolled back only chart here, not the whole dashboard. And right. of course, we can apply our merge operation or we can cancel it. Yeah. So let's apply it. Okay. And then will our timeline change as well then to show us that, hey, we've got a new version now? Uh, yep. Uh, for doing that, we uh, we have to create uh, a new version in our Git repository. Uh, I mean, okay. push push it. Uh, let's uh, create that uh, pie chart is the best chart <laughs> and save. There's going to be people that disagree with us, but that is a great title right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm joking that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, so, cool. Pie chart is a, a great chart. Uh, let's again go uh, to the GIF viewer and you will see that uh, for see now. That we incredible have... timeline. Yeah. Let's see our timestamp for today. So here in our timeline, we can see that. Uh, in May and June, there is no any change. Uh, yep. and, yeah, and here we we see in July. My chart. chart is the chart. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, Dude, that's awesome. And how about the load script? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, if we're talking about uh, load script, we can do the same thing. Uh, I can go to the data load editor and show you. Yep. Okay. That it's working the same uh, like with the dashboards. We just divide uh, your screen into in two parts, uh, and you can see different. And and you've got and that's what that little timer is. Yep, this little timer uh, told you uh, that if you will press it, you, you will see uh, here the okay. different version of the uh, script here. Nice. Uh, and obviously in this particular choice, we, di we didn't make changes to the script. Yeah, That's what yeah. that little timer icon would do then if you've got the Gitto Clock Helper installed. But we can try to make some change in current version. Because yeah, my boss Hugo likes to get in and start messing with my code all the time. <laughs> takes my emojis out of my comments and everything. It's great. Um, okay, so uh, wow, we can see it here. Wow, I love that visual too. Yeah, dude. And you can roll back to the selected version here. And so that's the interface. You just you click that arrow. Yep. Come on. <laughs> I know y'all are standing up and doing happy dances right now. This is crazy. And, you know, uh, another thing uh, regarding this feature is if you have some kind of uh, library of uh, uh, load script or subroutines that you want to distribute uh, from the library to your application, uh, you can do it uh, by GitHub Log 2. Um, for example, you can change repository here. You can select Git repository uh, with auto calendar code. Okay. Oh, uh, oops. <laughs> Let's go to the another place. Uh, <laughs> Take a different we have, uh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have uh, here. We have uh, import section. Uh, we can go to the. Look at um, look at Wonderlic number one up there. Of course. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and we can import uh, click view components in our current application if we want. Um. But let me show you some. Okay, here we uh, we have some Deloitte application maybe. Uh, okay, there is no any load script here. Oh, okay. So I opened okay. this application, uh, this repository that called demo HR. Right. And it contains uh, some uh, code uh, that maybe I want to reuse in my current application. Okay. Uh, I can go to the calendar page here. Uh, select this section calendar and press import button. So you and, so I assumed when you said script libraries, it was like QVS files, click view script yep. files, right? Yep. 
um, yep. that we'd, Hey, I want to re you know, I've got a function library, a subroutine library, you know, some common code stuff. Mm -hmm. You're actually letting me look at the load scripts from other apps and say, oh, that I know I know where I've got that code. Let me go get that code. Yep. That is, dude, this is this is crazy. And so if you have again some uh, some your development workflow standard uh, in in your team, uh, you can create uh, QVS uh, libraries uh, and tell everyone they hey if you want to use auto calendar or master calendar, you can reuse my uh, code snippet uh, and you can import yep. it on the GitHub log using GitHub log. That is that is really really cool. And here you can see the imported sections. Yep. That called calendar. Yep. And you know we have the same feature. Uh, I mean, important feature for master items uh, and bookmarks. I so did not know that, but I think everybody knows how much I love talking about master items and dimensions for governance. So let's see that. Uh, yeah, if you have uh, again, if you have some template application that will be called PNL or finance applications, and uh, there are many, uh, let's take a look. There are many uh, master items uh, that was uh, created. Wow. Okay. You can just import uh, your master item in your current application, but uh, and you could act, and then you could choose to import all of them or five yeah. of them. Yeah, and uh, or you can use uh, search here. Oh, stop it! And You're trying you to save people time or something. <laughs> uh, so, and you also can import variables here. Wow! And as I said, and if bookmarks. you have yeah, if you have something, but uh, uh, it's pretty obvious, but I uh, have to say that uh, it will work only if you have uh, similar data models. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Which, of course, we will because we're importing code right from other applications. Yep. Very neat. Yeah. And, and you, can, uh, you can import sheets as well. That. Yep. Man, you're making people's lives too easy. Yeah, that's that's our mission. <laughs> I love it. Well, if you can finish, uh, stop sharing your screen, and, then, and we can just kind of end with some conversation then. Yep. Uh, I, I think it should be everybody easy for everybody to see how, how crazy cool this is. This really is. I, I love the name. It seems like a weird name until <laughs> you, you explain it. You're... you're <laughs> your history uh because you are saving developers tons and tons of time uh you're making it easier for people to work in multi-developer environments um you're you're making governance stronger um, by being able to share and reuse the same things um, by being able to walk back lineage uh the simplicity of of tying in uh, generative AI to try to, to help developers avoid having to do manually the things that they um, may not like. I could type a description faster than I could press the button and wait for it, but I can get multiple descriptions by just pressing the button over and over till I get one that I like. You allow them to control the generative AI process uh, so that it's predictable um, as opposed to, hey, I'm just throwing stuff out there. It's going to come back all <laughs> haphazard. You know, you you could make it as concise or elaborate as you want. If you added a phrase like a description that a business user or a non-technical person uh, would take, which is generally what I add a lot when I'm trying to pass things up the food chain uh, here within Click, is I'll ask, can you take what I just wrote as the click dork and convert that to something a high-end business person would understand? Um, so this is great. And, and obviously, as you showed, you're still working on the whole documentation thing. Yep. Um, 
but but that's neat. And I think for those who are trying to understand uh, generative AI and and oh, you know, and especially Open AI that that gets a lot of the talk, um, there is a limit to, um, which is a good thing, because as I mentioned, you do have to have your own API key, and there is a charge. Um, it say the fact that they limit tokens saves you on the call so mm -hmm. that you're not waiting for an hour and a half burning up, you know, GPU time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's a, ah, I generated this yeah. and it was $405. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's coming back, you know, they're timed with the tokens for things that can be solved pretty quickly. Um, and you know what that cost is. Um, so I think once you get a, a role in there that would say, hey, go get me the first part of it, go get me the next part of it, go get me the next part of it, um, and, and perhaps even allow end users, I'm imagining then you'll add some type of setting. How many tokens are you willing to spend per time? Yeah. Uh, so that you could limit it that then, right? Um, so I, I think that would be cool. What else do you got planned, man? I mean, I know you're not sitting around thinking, ah, I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll just make it prettier at this point. What else do you have planned? Uh, you know, so um, our mission is uh, save time for every click developer. And uh, uh, from this perspective, uh, I, I see, um, I, I saw business glossary. I, I mean, I, I want to focus on business glossary a glossary module that uh, uh, was released by uh, by Click and Click Cloud platform. Because yep. uh, I think uh, it is the place where we can um, bring more, uh, again, more benefits uh, to, to give access from one window inside the application to the business glossary, maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, for now. It's just a raw idea that I have in my mind, uh, and I want to focus and uh, play with this idea. Because of I think um, if you can create or check that uh, this uh, uh, selected chart or master item related to the term in business glossary, right. it's a great uh, it's a great place uh, um, where we can uh, bring the value. I I love it, and that's. Uh... Be sure to reach out and talk to my friend Clever Anios, um, who's, who's on our team. Um, mm -hmm. When we started internally looking at different things for generative AI, um, his mind immediately went to the brand new data glossary. Like, mm -hmm. this is brand new. Nobody's typed all this stuff in yeah. yet, right? This is the perfect place. Generate it. Generate yeah. it. And, and so he, he walked down that path. Um, uh -huh. my, my idea was for vocabulary um, mm. to take advantage of what we already have with our insight advisor. And mm. so the video I did recently was, hey, look, I can ask yeah. it for other names and put them right into the vocabulary. And now I can ask insight advisor, you know, elaborate mm. new questions that I could never have thought of um, myself as a developer. Um, so the Git O'Clock Helper, um, does this work for on-premise and the cloud, or does it just work in one or the other, or what? Uh, it, it works well for both uh, Click Cloud and Click Client Manage instance of uh, Click, so you can use it in any environment uh, that you have. That's fantastic, or both. If people are kind of in a hybrid mode, they can use it for both. Yeah. That's, that, dude, that, that's awesome, and, and it's great to know. Uh, especially for people, I think there's a lot of people that know, maybe we're on-premise now, we're planning to go to the cloud. Um, if they get a tool like this, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're covered. Their investment in you is covered for a while. Um, yeah. So, all right, my friend, uh, this has been a pleasure talking to you, Alex. That's uh, I've seen some of your stuff and I was like, man, I need to take the time and <laughs> and get to know this guy and, and get to see more about what the ghetto clock stuff is. Um, I think Modio's on the right track, man. They they've got some great some great separate tools um, and the vision uh, to integrate those things together and allow developers. Hey, if I'm already in my app, let's do it here. If I'm you know if I'm an administrator, 
and, mm -hmm. and a developer says, Hey, I need to roll the whole thing back or, you know, uh, somebody, you know, lost their mind one day and deleted an app by mistake. Not that I've ever have. I've never pressed delete on the wrong app. I assure you <laughs> that, that doesn't happen. Just my boss, Hugo deletes the wrong <laughs> app on occasion. Uh, or my chart or my code. Uh, uh, so I, I think that's great. And man, I really love that. Uh, the, the timeline as well to, to just continue reiterating why you came up with the name ghetto clock. <laughs> All right, my friend, anything, any th last thing you want to share before we go? Uh, so thank you, Delton. It was a great pleasure for me uh, to be here today uh, in your castle. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, install Git Clock. Uh, it's uh, just a message from me for everyone, for every click developer. If you want to go home early, uh, <laughs> start to use Git Clock. <laughs> That is a good value proposition if you want to go home early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Uh Alex, thank you so much for taking your time, my friend. Uh this is this has been a this has been a great session. Um and uh wish you nothing but continued success. Uh I, I do want to connect you with my with my buddy Clever, because uh, he's got a strong vision uh, about that mm. data class, the business glossary. Um, and the importance uh, that that has uh, for organizations and, and for mm -hmm. governance. So I think that's going to be a, that'll be a cool hookup. Um, everybody's mm -hmm. always welcome in my data cathedral. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> what I, that's what I love talking about all the time. <laughs> and as always, I hope that you have a great, great day. <laughs>